Introduction to Romans. This little video is an introduction to Romans. So what are your priorities? What should our priorities be? So here's a little um, example of what we can, you know, think of time management as. Here is a little fishbowl and it has three big rocks. One says Bible, one says prayer, and one says ministry. Now the ministry can be to our family, our friends, our, and other people. So we minister to people while here on earth. Now if I put in some gravel on top of those rocks and then follow that with some sand on top of the gravel and then finally some water, what's the point of this illustration? It's to make sure that you get the big rocks in first. So we have to have priorities in our short life. And rightly dividing Pauline believers are trying to free the wrongly dividing believers from a prison they don't know they're in. So do you have a retirement plan? I'm not talking about your retirement plan here on earth. I'm talking about your eternal retirement plan, where you're going to spend eternity and how you're going to spend it. Now, there are three rights for understanding the Bible and what God said. Number one, write gospel. Number two, write Bible. Number three, write division. So let's look at the right gospel that saves a soul today. I declare the gospel by which ye are saved, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. So he died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Once we believe this from the heart, that the Son, what the Son of God did, then we receive His righteousness, His Spirit, His life in us, His eternal life. We have eternal life then. So Christ died for our sins. Uh oh, I don't have my pointer. Oh, there it is. Okay, He was buried in that tomb, and then He rose the third day. And thank you, Son of God, for your loving kindness to give your life for us. So now the second thing was write Bible. And I'm just going to tell you the truth, and I'm not going to beat around the bush. One of the most destructive things you can do to yourself is to fail to submit to the authority of the King James Bible. The King James Bible is the Holy Bible, and it has all the words in there perfectly, just the way they're supposed to be. A day without reading the Bible is a wasted day. So what was our problem? Wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So we inherited the sin nature from Adam, and death passed upon everyone, and physical and spiritual. And we'll have, you know, the second death if we don't believe for all eternity. And we've also added our own sin. So what is the third um, right? It's right division. So God gives us one rule for how to understand the Bible. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Second Timothy 2.15 So we have to divide truth from truth. All the Bible is truth. So we divide 
the truth that's given to those people who will live in heaven from those people who will live on earth. Our spiritual life will not function on the basis of ignorance. Rightly dividing allows us to understand and believe all the verses in the Bible. So we're going to find out that there are 13 letters in the Bible that's for us who will live in heaven. And this is an edification process. So, um, those letters are, um, you know, all begin with the name Paul. So, let's find out when Paul understood the information in Romans. And when did he first teach it? So here's the question. When did Paul first teach the info in Romans? So it doesn't take much intelligence to figure out that he probably taught it at the school of Tyrannus in Ephesus when he was there for three years. And... Um, he had great success because many of the Ephesians decided to burn their curious arts or witchcraft books because their lives were so changed, especially by, you know, the informations in Romans 6 through 8. So we'll, we'll talk about that a little while long, uh, from now. So, but there, there was opposition from Satan, but um, we'll talk about that in a minute. So, Paul had sent Erastus and Timotheus to check on Corinth, and they probably sailed across from Ephesus to Corinth. And then, after a while, they returned. And Paul found out that the Corinthians still were not following him wholeheartedly. So he sent Titus to Corinth. So um, after the uproar in Ephesus, Paul was forced to leave. So he left and he was trying to meet Titus in Troas. But Titus didn't show up, so Paul went on into Macedonia, and he ran into Titus. And he told Titus, go back to Corinth and collect some money for the poor saints in Jerusalem, and I will get there after a while. So Paul went up to Illyricum and down to Corinth. He took his time about getting there. And once he got to Corinth, he stayed there for three months. And that's where he wrote down Romans because Paul had decided to go to Jerusalem and he didn't want that information not to be sent to his friends in Rome just in case anything happened to him. So Paul, after three months, left and he wanted to sail to Syria with the, with the money and, and the delegates. But the Jews laid wait for him, so they um, he he went by land instead, and then by sea, and so he finally made it down to Jerusalem, where he was. Then, after a while, put him in jail. So he was arrested there. And so, um, he, had, he had already sent that letter to Rome. So, let's take a look at the scriptures. Okay, but when we, before we do that, let's take a look at how there was a, you know, when, when the silversmiths and the coppersmiths saw the wonderful uh, way... That, that the people believed what Paul said and that people weren't 
really buying the silver shrines to the temple of Diana anymore, then they had an uproar where they chanted for two hours, greatest Diana of the Ephesians. And so um, the town clerk at, you know, quieted them down and told them these men have done nothing against your goddess or against your worship. So, you know, we're, in, we're liable to get in trouble with Rome. So this concourse has to, you know, dis, dis, dissolve. You have to go back home. But during that whole uproar, Priscilla and Aquila were hiding Paul in their home. Let me see if I can show you where he is. Oops. There he is. There's Paul. He was hiding. They risked their lives to hide him. And we're going to find that out as we study Romans. So let's look at the scriptures. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it to be 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. This is all in Acts 19. After these things were ended, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he was so excited about the, how powerfully the, the doctrine or instruction from Christ worked in the people that he now purposes in his heart to tell the people in Macedonia, Achaia, that's Corinth and Jerusalem and then even in Rome what this doctrine that he has has that Christ has revealed to him the instructions for the body of Christ so he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him Timotheus and Erastus but he himself stayed in Asia for a season so that's when they left Timotheus and Erastus And the same time there arose no small stir about that way. So the way that Paul is teaching. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation, and said, Sirs, you know that by this craft, we have our wealth. This is how we make our living. So that was in 1923 through 25. Now we're going skipping down to 34. But when they knew that he, that was Alexander the Coppersmith probably, or Alexander um, of like occupation, was a Jew all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Then the town clerk stands up um, and quiets the people and says, For ye have brought hither these men, which are neither robbers. Okay, the men were Jason and Gaius of churches, nor yet blasphemers of your goddess. So here's an important po important point. These men were body of Christ believers, but they had not blasphemed your goddess or robbed the churches. So we should never speak, you know, we should not speak evil about somebody else's faith. We should just be telling the truth of, you know, Pauline doctrine. For we are in danger to be called, this is Tom Clark talking, in question, you know, by Rome, for this day's uproar, there being no cause whereby we may give an account of this concourse. After, and after the uproar was ceased, 
Paul called unto him the disciples and embraced them and departed for to go into Macedonia. And when he had gone over those parts and had given them much exhortation, he came into Greece, so that's Corinth, and there abode three months. And when he and when the Jews laid wait for him, as he was about to sail into Syria, he purposed to return through Macedonia. So he's taking the money now through Macedonia. So let's take one more look at, um, you know, the uproar and the town clerk and the Romans and the hiding of Paul by Aquila, Priscilla and Aquila. Okay, so it's very important to know when the body of Christ began. The body of Christ did not begin in Acts 2, which was prophesied information as Peter stood up and gave, you know, explained what happened with the coming of the Holy Ghost. The body of Christ really began in Acts 9 and will end at the rapture. So it was an appearing to Saul of Tarsus of Jesus Christ. Saul of Tarsus had been a persecutor and a blasphemer and injurious to Peter's group. And so, but Christ appeared to him in Acts 9 on the road to Damascus, and he made him his one apostle to the one body of Christ. And this was an unprophesied event. The 12 apostles are for the people who live on earth, Israel, people of Israel. So the Lord said to Saul, also known as Paul, who received the Spirit at that point when he believed, but rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee. Delivering thee, okay, so he's, he, he's seen the risen Lord return to, to save him, glorified and risen. And then he's going to appear to him some more, the Lord is, to give him more revelation. Delivering thee from the people, that's the Jews, and from the Gentiles unto whom now, that's in Acts 9, I send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from power, the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Acts 26, 16 through 18. So those who are sanctified by faith, which is that is in me, is Peter's group. They're already sanctified because they already received the Holy Ghost when they believed the gospel of the kingdom and repented and were baptized in water. But, okay, but our baptism is spiritual into the body of Christ and our circumcision is spiritual and we don't have any dietary laws. Okay, Paul said, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. So he was the leading sinner saved how be it for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering okay so in me first he can show forth all long suffering and Paul um, f um so Paul, uh, the Lord is long-suffering, trying to save souls right now, wanting people to believe the, the gospel. For a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. 1 Timothy 1, 15 through 16. So we know that 
Peter was saved before Paul, but now Paul is saying he's the first sinner in me first. So he's actually talking about him being the first sinner saved into the body of Christ, not the first sinner saved at all. And that those that would hereafter believe, like you and me, we would be also part of that group. Okay, so the mystery is a new chance for the Gentiles to live in heaven. 2 Corinthians 5.1 says, eternal in the heavens. So we need to be both dispensational and biblical because God gave progressive truth saying different things at different times. We have a new apostle, Paul, a new gospel, justification by faith, a new dispensation of grace, a new agency, the body of Christ, a new audience, all people, new operating system, grace, not the law, a new ministry, reconciliation, a new destiny, heaven. God changed a program nearly 2,000 years ago, and people still want to live under the old program. So, you know, we're trying to help you not to live under the old program. So, let's take a look at, at uh, a few things. So... <laughs> The, when they were worshiping the goddess Diana, see, here's the earth, and the first heaven is where the birds fly, the second heaven where Satan and his angels are, and the third heaven is where the Son of God sits at the right hand of the Father. So when they were worshiping the goddess Diana, who was really a meteorite, they were worshiping Satan and his fallen angels who in time past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Acts 14, 16. So God gave the Gentiles up and over to do what they wanted instead of, you know, correcting them. So Paul received the mystery, which is the capstone of the information in the Bible. And the last words of Jesus were through Paul. To us so what is God's will who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth the knowledge of the truth is that God has two sets of instructions in the Bible and we need to separate one set from the other we don't measure the truth of something by the number of people that believe it we measure the truth by whether or not the Word of God says it's true in order to follow Jesus, we will have to follow Paul. So let's take a brief look at the timeline. Okay, the Bible is laid out prophecy, mystery, prophecy. So God's plan is to end the rebellion in heaven and in earth and to restore all things. Okay, <clears throat> so the rebellion began in heaven. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. Ezekiel 28, 15. So Lucifer was perfect until iniquity was found in him and he became Satan. After that, God made Adam and Eve and they fell and rebelled against God because they disobeyed God and ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So they plunged all mankind into um, sin, being sinners, inherited sin nature. Then there was, you know, the flood of Noah, then the call of Abraham, and then Moses gave the law to Israel. God made his one nation out of one man, Abraham, because he had set the Gentiles aside uh, at the Tower of Babel when they were trying to reach up to heaven and worship them instead of the true God. So um, after Moses came David, and then 
came Daniel and the 490 years prophesied for Israel until Messiah comes. Then there was 400 years of silence, these dots, dotted line represent that. And then the silence was broken by John the Baptist introducing the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. And he got, uh, chose, 12 were chosen for service by God. That was Peter and the 11. And they preached the gospel of the kingdom. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Matthew 5, 5. So they will inherit the earth. But after three years of ministry, Christ was crucified, buried, and then rose again three days later. Then he was here for 40 days to help the little flock to get through the tribulation and into the kingdom. Then he ascended from the Mount of Olives. Ten days later, he sent down the Holy Ghost on Peter and 120 in the upper room. And they gave a renewed offer of the kingdom um, for one year. But at the end of that year, they stoned Stephen, who was full of the Holy Ghost. And so Israel committed the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. And that was in Acts 7. And that was the fall of the nation of Israel, the religious leaders. But Peter's group continued until they were put on hold in their information was and, and and commission was interrupted in Acts 15. In Acts 9, Saul of Tarsus was saved. So there was a little overlap between Acts 9 and Acts 15 between Peter and Paul until Paul uh, Peter was put on hold. So Christ appeared to Paul and made him the one apostle to the one body of Christ. And Paul was chosen for service by God. And he would receive the dispensation of the grace of God to save lost Gentiles. Any lost Gentiles that believe the gospel become part of the body of Christ. And they are the saved Gentiles. We are living in mystery. Our information is Romans to Philemon. The books of the Bible make a timeline for understanding the Bible. From Genesis to Acts is about the earthly program. And Acts is a transition book from Peter to Paul. Then Romans to Philemon is the 13 letters to us. Paul wrote to all that be in Rome. So that's not, you know, that those are Gentiles and body of Christ members. They're not Israel. So there'll be another appearing of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, to rapture the church. So we're living between two appearings in the parentheses, between his appearing to Paul and his appearing to rapture those people that were saved, represented by the black people. Now, after our rapture, we go to the judgment seat of Christ, where we're um, evaluated for which job we're going to have for eternity. So that's why it's important to have a retirement plan, to, to know what God's doing and, and join in what God is doing. So after our rapture, there'll be some more yellow men that will be saved, just as there were some yellow men saved under um, John the Baptist, Jesus Christ, and Peter's ministry. So there'll be more joining them. So God has interrupted or postponed the seven years of tribulation, also known as the wrath. The man of sin the son, becomes the son of perdition in the middle of the tribulation where he sets himself up in the temple at Jerusalem and says, you know, that he's Christ. He's the Christ. And so um, the last days will, will have resumed when he signs the seven-year co covenant with Israel to allow for animal sacrifices. Then 
comes the second coming of Jesus Christ to restore everything and make restitution for re, you know and re, the regeneration of the earth and set everything right that went wrong with Adam and he'll rule for a thousand years um, and the the Jews that believed you know, and all the people in prophecy that believed will be resurrected but um, after a thousand years there'll be one more skirmish with the Gentiles then the great white throne judgment of all the lost those who didn't believe what God said but in the you know and that we will live in the ages to come in the new heaven and new earth but those people who didn't believe will be cast into the lake of fire so we're almost done um, I just wanted to show you one more thing and that is um, well first of all let me just show you that we have a lot of books a lot of books our most important book is God's secret a primer for how with pictures for how to rightly divide the word truth all of these are available on Amazon through Israel's fall Salvation has come to the Gentiles. So we have commentary on all Paul's letters, two of them, two, two sets of commentary. And then we have um, a book on Hebrews, written to the Hebrews, because Hebrews to Revelation is about how to get through the seven years of tribulation and into the kingdom, written, not written to us. And then we have um, why the King James Bible is the Holy Bible, Treasure Hunt. That's all of Paul's uh, letters, commentary. A children's book, just as God said, could God have a 7,000 year plan for mankind? Why was the earth without form, void, and dark? How to be saved made simple? So there's a lot of books um, available by Marianne Manley on Amazon. So let's just take a quick look at um, the end of Romans. How can we be stable? Paul explains it in three steps. One, now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. So we already went over my gospel. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. So that's the most clearest, briefest, concisest way of the gospel. But the gospel is said in Romans 3, 21 through 28 very clearly too. So that's Paul's my gospel. God is speaking through Paul now. And so the imputation was the way that God solved the sin problem. When we believe, he, he, you know, when I believed, he took my sin, God placed my sin on him, and I received his righteousness. So, you know, there's a transaction. God made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So once I had his righteousness on me and I became blue instead of red, you know, then I was placed with the other blue people that had believed into the body of Christ. And now we're waiting to be raptured. Okay, so the second part that stabilizes us and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest. So notice how it begins with an and. That's how we keep these things separate. So this is point two. So we have to believe the preaching of Jesus Christ according to revelation of the mystery, which is Romans to Philemon, the instruction given to Paul. So now it's been revealed. It's been revealed for nearly 2,000 years. And number three point, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, 
made known to all nation for the obedience of faith to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever amen so the scripture of the prophets is the rest of the Bible outside of Paul so we can clearly see as we compare and contrast the information given to Paul with the information given to Peter that there is a difference between prophecy and mystery those are the major divisions in the Bible Peter said whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began but Paul talked about something Acts 321 so Christ is going to come back and restore all the things that went you know wrong after Adam sinned and this has been spoken since the world began that the, the the Lord Jesus Christ will live again on his on the earth with his people so here is the Bible made simple see how there's red pages on both sides of the blue pages the blue pages is what Paul wrote Romans to Philemon the and that's our instructions to the body of Christ but the red pages Genesis to Acts 8, well, really Acts 9, um, and Hebrews to Revelation, those red pages are for the people who will live on earth. So we have to follow the right instructions, but we learn from all the Bible. We can learn from what God said. That's why their portion is bigger than ours, because we can learn from them. So do I use the instructions for my Instapot to fix any problems with my power juicer? No, I keep the instructions separate. We have to keep the red instructions separate from the blue instructions. So this, um, how to be stable was Romans 16, 25 through 27. Okay, we're almost done. So... Do we follow earthly or heavenly instructions? The blue, okay, the heavenly instructions. That's how to avoid spiritual darkness. My website is marianmanley.com. The YouTube channel, Salvation, Rightly Dividing, and the Rapture, Truth Be Told, also carries our videos. Please like, share the video, and subscribe. Let's get the word out together. Thank you for watching.